When the laptop is on, the logo lights up. And that's really cool. Hey guys, welcome back. We're here with another laptop review. Today we have the Acer Predator Helios 300. This particular model has the RTX 2060 GPU. Now we did review a similar laptop. It had the 1660 Ti. Now there will be a video coming out. We'll compare the two cards. And we also already have a video existing for the laptop with the 1660 Ti. Additionally, we have already upgraded the storage capacity of this laptop. That's also in a separate video link down below. So yeah, let's get into the unboxing. Keep this aside. The laptop came in this fairly standard shipping package. Keep that aside. So the laptop sits inside. Uh, it's fairly snug, has a nice look and feel to it. Let's carry on with unboxing it. All right, keep that aside. Packaging is well, fairly standard for a laptop, uh, it's packaged quite well, it's in there pretty tightly so it won't bounce around. You don't want a laptop that's been bouncing around during shipping and handling. So here it is. You mentioned the specs. This particular unit has a i7-9750H at 4.6 gigahertz. It's a six core processor. It also has an RTX 2060 GPU with six gigabytes of GDR6 RAM. We also have 16 gigabytes of 2666 megahertz RAM DDR4. This particular unit has a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. It's an NVMe drive, uh, M2. Regarding the storage capacity, it can be upgraded. Like we said, it's in a video down below, but with the SSD installed, it has another slot for an NVMe and another slot for a standard hard drive. So expansion is pretty good. It also has a four zone RGB keyboard. It's not, you can't customize per key, which would be nice, but four zones looks pretty great. You can make a rainbow. It also has a one, 144 hertz screen at uh, three millisecond response time in overdrive. So that's always nice to have with an RTX 2060. You want the frame rate, you have the frame rate. Time to put into a game such as Overwatch, but we'll get into that later. So let's see how the build quad, uh, quality is. Okay, very importantly, can you open the lid with one hand? without raising the rest of the laptop? Yes, you can. That feels so great. Okay, uh, well, let's move on to the back since we just lifted the lid. This is a graphite black laptop with blue accents, color accents. Looks nice and sharp, to be honest. Um, the screen doesn't really flex too much. I know some screens are plastic and it really flexes and it just doesn't feel great at all. Even when you're raising the screen, it doesn't really flex too much. Moving on to the front. Let's see if the body flexes. Not really, it doesn't really flex. It's like this metal finish, aluminum. It's pretty, pretty sturdy, pretty solid build. It's a pretty solid build. Um, keyboard. 
travel distance. Feels good. Mouse pad. Mouse pad is nice and smooth. You have to click down for left click and right click. It doesn't have its own independent buttons. That might bother some people. It might not bother some other people. It's all down to personal preference, but it feels good. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels good. We have slim bezels as well. Slim bezels makes everything look sleek and minimalistic. It looks great for a laptop. As we know, these keys have the blue accent as well, as well as WSAD. Looks great. And around the trackpad, you have the blue accent as well. So have they got a theme going on. Maybe you can use the four zone keyboard, RGB keyboard. Kind of have a matching theme if you'd like. We'll move on to the power brick real quick. It's a fairly slim power brick. It doesn't weigh so much. It's not so much a brick like other laptops are. It's fairly slim too. So if you're carrying this laptop around in a backpack, you know, it won't bulge as much. It won't press on to other things. That's really annoying with some laptops. You have such a huge power brick and it's, you can knock someone out with it. This won't be knocking anyone out. All right, let's talk about some of the ports this particular laptop has. Okay, I'll just close the lid in the meantime so I can handle it without flexing it, even though it doesn't really flex, no chances. All right, we have the air ventilation here where the heat gets thrown out, the exhaust. We have an HDMI port here on the right side. We also have a Thunderbolt port. We have a USB 3.0 port and we have a USB Type-C port. So Type-C is nice and Thunderbolt is nice. If you ever plan on getting an eGPU, which probably won't for a while. Here we also have another uh, exhaust outlet. We have a Kensington lock here. So if you live in a dorm or college of any type, you can bolt this down to your table or whatever. This is where the power jack plugs into, right into here. Might be a little bit of a weird position, but it's off to the side. It's not on the same side, you'll have a mouse, so it shouldn't be in the way. We also have the ethernet port right here. And we have two more USB 3.0s with the audio jack. Speaking of ports, we have two exhaust ports on the back as well. Those are accented with blue, matching the design. It's a nice, nice color palette, to be honest. It's quite sharp. Well, that's an odd noise, but uh, what can you do? Probably in the BIOS, you can turn that off. Some laptops you can. All right, well, let's check out the brightness of the screen. Oh, nice rainbow effect going on here. That's pretty cool. Okay, let me just turn it around. Brightness. Okay. Right now we're running on battery power and on maximum brightness with battery power. It's pretty bright and we have interior lighting. It's kind of bright, yeah, when you look at it. But the screen does well. It's uh, not so bright, but it's not exactly dim either. Um, Colors are okay, everything's okay. It's a bright screen and it's fairly responsive from the touchpad, instant. And the touchpad's nice and smooth. 144 hertz looks great. It's only a matter of time until we have above 200, really. Um, for a laptop, usually laptops have really bad, really bad touchpads, especially gaming laptops. But this is using Windows Precision Drivers, so can't go wrong there. Let's see the right click. 
kind of have to apply some force on that just a little bit more than I personally like for right click. But most gamers will just be using a mouse anyways, so it's not much of an issue. But the touchpad is, is great. It's really good. The screen is pretty bright. It's responsive. What could go wrong? Pretty good. The RGB lighting looks cool. It's a little hard to see the lighting in the, you know, the lights we're using for the video. They don't seem that bright, but some colors are punching through, especially like red and green, blue. Those colors punch through. And if you're in a, most gamers game in a dimly lit room, you'll have no problem seeing the RGB keyboard. Just in a moment, we'll get into the benchmarks. That's all that really matters, frame rates and temperatures. We want to see how the sound levels are, the fans, you know, if they're insanely loud, if it sounds like an aircraft taking off, or we also want to see the temperatures of the GPU, but most importantly, the CPU, because it is a six core i7 at supposed to go up to 4.5 gigahertz. So let's check that out. Let's check that out. Let's see the performance and superposition tech demo. Let's go ahead with it. We'll be running it at 4K optimal. So we have the power brick, it's plugged in. Uses a US plug, so if you're living outside the United States, make sure you have some kind of adapter. Anywho, we have superposition benchmark. It's a tech demo, it's a common tech demo. It's a really nice one. We'll be running it at 4K optimized using DirectX. So first we'll listen to the volume, like the speaker quality, and then once the fans kick in, we'll reduce that volume so we can hear the fans. We'll also be monitoring the temperatures and all that in the meantime. We'll also check out turbo mode, which makes the fans run at maximum. We want to see how loud that can get. Let's continue. Speakers are on maximum. So for casual and light gaming, it may take a while for your GPU to heat up, causing fans to crank up. Right now the GPU is sitting at 61 Celsius and the fans are not too loud. Of course, most gamers use headphones, but regardless, it's not too loud right now. We'll still have to wait till we put it under a higher load. CPU is fluctuating, you know, the frequencies it has a maximum of 4.5. So far we've managed to hit 4.1, 3 depends. GPU hovers around 1400 megahertz at 99% usage. Let's see how loud it gets on turbo mode. It's pretty loud. Pretty loud indeed. But I like how you click the turbo mode button and instant fan speed. It doesn't take a while to rev up, none of that. It's instant, maximum. So if you ever have some kind of emergency with heating, 
whatever. Click it, instant. Frame rate is around, it's hanging around 30 to 40, somewhere in between, it depends really. Okay, well, here's the score, 4,883 for Superposition Tech Demo. And we're running at 4K optimized with DirectX. So let's continue the benchmarks and see how it fares during real world applications. Such as all the latest titles, the trending titles, more demanding titles. So we really appreciate you guys for watching. We appreciate the comments and subscribers we've been getting. Um, we always love to respond to any questions as best as we can with the knowledge we can. Uh, if you have any more questions or any specific tech demos you wish for us to use in the future, any tips, any suggestions, whatever, feel free to let us know in the comments. And thank you for watching and looking forward to making more videos for you guys next time. Thank you.
Thank you.